Hello, it's John Lord here and our last video we made changes here. There used to be this this gravelly area used to go all the way around here and we we dug it up a little bit, barked it and I put a new edging on it. And we then we plant it. Now the idea of planting is quite important. Shrubs, a mixed border, it's shrubs. And when you talk about mix, you're talking about mix in terms of structure, like big plants and smallish plants. So we put on a big tree, one tree. We stripped up the cedar way up, so light can get in. And then what we have is a smallish amount of large plants, and then we fill them with small plants. If we put too many shrubs in, and they all get in together, you end up with a big shrub border, uh, you nearly want a machete to get through it. So you, you want to have the odd shrub and then fill in with herbaceous. Um, what we did, we planted this uh, beautiful Japanese maple. We think it's uh, Benimayaku. That was moved from up there. It's put there. There's one. So we've got one. We put a hydrangea here called Runaway Bride. Um, a lot of good stuff wrote about it. I don't know whether it's going to be any good or not. But anyway, that's going to be Runaway Bride here. And I hope it runs away with itself. We planted a rose here. David Austin rose. Something, somebody Austin. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was, one of his grand, it was named after one of his granddaughters. That's to come up to here. So you have your rose here. We left this Acer here. Um, Garnet, I think one of the weepy ones one shrub two shrubs three shrubs um sort of small leaf fuchsias we put three of them in together just the ordinary commonish you know fuchsia but it's it's different texturally than the others we have a nice apple tree here red obelisk i was going to remove that branch and i decided not to because you can't put it back again after you remove it glad i didn't um we have this here, we're not moving it. It's Leonard Messel. The two hollies we left. And the only other tree, well, the only other trees we put in, our large plants, was this Korean dogwood, uh, or, or Japanese dogwood, Cornus, uh, it's Cornus causa, and it's a variety called Teutonia. So it's quite so, um, shrub here, shrub there that's never going to be allowed to get much bigger we keep that clip keep that one clip and then finally this acer and that was moved from here we moved that across it was lost in there so just perfect here um and we haven't made our mind up about this spot this uh blotchy laurel we haven't made our mind up what to do with it and the feature, we put this, we're getting rid of this, you don't need it, it's a buddleia. And behind here, we have snow gum from, I thought it was Tasmania, you know, it grows in um, uh, the snowy mountains in Australia, the higher up, so it will take uh, a lot of coal, no problem here, it survived a really bad, really cold winter. And that is m one of the main features of this whole border of this bark so we don't really want to put stuff in front to hide the bark or this bark that was it an acer that we, we cut i cut down with my new toy saw i haven't removed it and um, an interesting point can we see here No, of course, it's not here. Give me one second. If I can get in here. It's very hard to get plants at the moment, you know, because everyone is gardening. 
shortage of plants, even common plants. I cannot get this plant, uh, this eu eucalyptus nimophila. So a week or two ago, I got uh, some of these seed pods and I put them in an envelope and just left them in a warm room and all the seeds have come out. So they're going to be sown and very easy to grow from seed. It's surprising that's so hard to get a plant that's so easy to grow from seed. So we're going to, we're going to grow these from seed and they grow very, very quickly. Um, but that's basically, that's basically what we've done here. Have I, have I left out anything? Yes. When you're walking in a garden, you have to be always careful when you're in a border. Look, Regersia podophylla just starting to come up. There's probably more rabbits, so you have to be a bit careful. Yes, the Rosa rugosa. You put them right back. And it's actually better already. They were they'd gone too high. They hadn't been cut for ten years. They will they will flower in about uh, they flower a month later, but they will still flower this year, and they'll be absolutely perfect. And cut to the finest hard back as well. So that will all come back nice. It will all come back. Um, so that's that. We have to fill in. I've got a job lot of uh, herbaceous plants um, and this one is geranium sanguinium. Sanguinium is native to Ireland but this is one called Apfelblüte. It's a, a German variety. It's hard to get much information on the web about it because most of the information is in German. And I'm not that good at German but I like it. It's a bit different. I've got four. And I'm planting for, and that's the start of our planting. Now over the summer we'd plant, we'd probably plant a few ferns. We, I don't know what we plant, but we have a bit of fun over the summer planting this all out with small stuff. Now, what else? Yes. Itopini. And that one is called Pink Ardor. Is it Ard Ardor? Pink Ardor? I don't know. Um, is it any good? I don't know. We'll find out very shortly. So that's a nice I top peony here. We um, we did a bit of planting here, then we planted two nice euphorbias, beautiful euphorbias. And once again, after getting, I'll try and find out the name of these ones, but I remember we had them somewhere else. They do not run and cause trouble. They're really nice, but look how, look how beautiful that foliage is. Even if it never flowered. It has a yellowy flower, but even if it never flowered, it would still be worth having in the garden. And we planted two clematis, based on, I think, uh, Clematis orientalis. Um, but it's it's not a climber. It's, it grows quite uh, small, quite short. Is it any good? It's, it's called Little Lemons. Is it any good? I don't know. We'll find out. But if it did do well, it would be lovely here with the ready roses behind. And we planted another Icopini here. This one is Scarlet Heaven. Is it any good? I don't know. You'll find out. It's the only way. Um, and then we'll, we're going to do a bit of small bit of gardening. First of all, we had very, very bad spring, late spring frost in April, and a lot of all, all my hydrangeas, my macrophylla hydrangeas, got badly whacked. But these got whacked the worst, so they're coming up, and it's very annoying because I wanted blue there, but we can't have. It. So I'm replacing them with hydrangea paniculata early sensation, and the reason. I generally don't like plants that have like a sensation. Generally, they don't, or like really names like sales salesman names that never deliver what they promise. But I've grown this and I have found it really good. What's good about it is it flowers. It's the earliest flowering, and it is earliest flower. It is the earliest flowering of the paniculate hydrangeas. It flowers up end of May. It's starting to flower, but it has a second flowering later. And I have it over there, in a, not even in a fully sunny spot, and it's still doing it. So you get two flowering periods. And the early flowers have faded to pink, and the new flowers are white. 
and it's a lovely combination so that's going here and they're going to go up one two so we just replace plant with plant so yeah, that's a nice handy job we won't get rid of them funnily funnily enough where i live i live about a mile from here two miles from here only a fraction of the frost so it's where you are this garden is an absolute torture for late spring frost but that's just the way it is you have to just live with it so that's going to go there um we plant it but we will we deal with this one last we'll go over here first this is the rose that was dug up with great damage uh, to life and limb by me and uh we i was going to replant it there but we put it here that's cordelia looking a bit sad but there's new buds already see a little bud there little red bud in there that will be in, a, in two months time you will never even know and let me talk about my famous irish man shovel it is a brilliant it is a brilliant gardening tool it was funny i never chap when he worked in heathrow airport about, about 10 years ago when he was expanding a fellow from around here and when he, he was working just as uh, doing the, the building and when he got there they asked him did he want a sh proper shovel they want an irish man shovel because a lot of the english shovels they're flat and you go like this with them but the irish man shovel you go like that it's much more aerodynamic but what's great about it it's very handy for weaving because you can use the you can use the point you see that Peat and buttercup, how easy it comes up with that, and you don't interfere with the rest of the plants. And, oh, weeds. This is the problem of getting a lad in, a person in, shall we say, to do a bit of weeding. They say, weed all this. And they come and they, they break weeding and they're weeding away, taking stuff out. For instance, the Lysisteria farmosa. And then they come and they take out this which is geranium pyranicum it's beautiful so we have to be careful but we will go through this or i will go through this and i'll hand weed it i'll hand weed it off it takes about take about half an hour to do the whole way along now even for dandelions i found this quite good of course you can never. And what we got here? It's a rose, wild rose. You get the point in. Up it comes. Dead easy. What do we do with the nettles? I'm not going to show off and, and take the nettles without the glove. I'm going to get the glove and take the nettles. The nettles need to go. This is another... We just did this today. Rosa Rugosas were cut down really low. And they, they will grow up. And we did it to expose the bark of the Prunus cerula. The lovely mahogany bark cherry, which you couldn't see. Now that, that's a Rugosa rose. That will still flower this year. So we need to do a bit of work here. And here's a bramble. Blackberry bush. You see, it's so easy with the shovel. Now, that's that's enough along here and we'll go this way. We planted this rose. There was a plant here that was removed when I had the digger man. And we planted this rose last week. And I planted it because if you have a look, can you see? See its colour? called news flash it has a gorgeous a sort of a you know honey colored a tangerine colored but I've decided I've decided to 
replace it with this. I've, I've, I don't know where we got these from. It's called uh, La Sevilla, Lef Sevillana. That probably means the Seville. But uh, anyway, uh, very good ride up and very good red flowers. And I wanted to plant it around there, but there's a, there's a red salvia and the two reds might, one mightn't help the other. But we're gonna plant it here. Take this up. That's not very, very good. Now you always plant below the graft union. Mm -hmm. uh, red flowers, they're going to be blue and they're going to be blue. Now what do we do with this? Poor thing. We replanted immediately around here. videos in the middle of the day when all the customers are around. Here. We use the proper spade. These were planted last year and they weren't good for asters. But we're not good. That's it. And we're going to plant in front, we're going to pla plant uh, evening primroses very good pink evening primrose I'll, I'll put the name of it up i meant to bring it along we're going to plant it's a, one that runs slightly at the root so one two three and they love from texas i think they love dry sunny spots and this is the driest sunniest part of the garden now um i'm a professional gardener and the thing on my mind now hardwired into my mind above everything else is water that bloody grows now immediately that was the most important thing to get water on that rose and then come along tomorrow and get water water again if it starts to droop a bit nip nip the the young growths from the top and that takes the pressure off the roots but that wants to be watered within the next five minutes okay that's it i've got watering to do well thanks for watching